This is Anna Imagination with The Healing Garden, and this is one of the last videos I am doing with my shitty-ass camera. I have a new one arriving today. It's over in Staten Island, and it's on its way to Brooklyn. So I'm going to go from a 720-pixel camera to an HD 4K. I cannot wait. So, um, and it also is a Sony with a microphone. So I'm hoping that the sound quality will also like max out as well. So enjoy the shitty quality for a little longer and then it's gone forever. So I posted something yesterday. I just ate my breakfast. So excuse me while I clean my teeth. And I posted online social experiment number one. Want to connect? Oh, what did I just do? Okay, that's so not what I wanted to do. Let me get my, okay, so want to connect with people? You have to consciously give a person an emotionally charged word, action, or object with your heart open and your boundaries up. And somebody asked me to explain. I didn't feel like typing all that out. So I'm going to respond to it here. There are only three ways you can transfer energy. There are only three ways you can connect with a human being. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. Three options. You can give them your words. You can do an action. You can give them a gift. That, that is it. Now, basically you can say something to them you can do something to them or you can give them something say do give that those are your options really there is nothing else available that is the only way we connect with another person now if we are doing this without thought then that's called mindless you know, the opposite of mindfulness so if we are doing this mindlessly then we are unaware unaware and if we are unaware it means that we are not conscious of the energy that we are exuding and that's the goal here is to go from unconscious to conscious because this is going to be a game changer once you switch this so let's say it's Christmas time Ugh. Ugh. this is exactly why I hate Christmas right here and your societal expectation says you have to go buy people gifts. The societal expectation telling you that you have to buy people gifts can go one of two ways, on a spectrum, of course. The societal expectation is, and this is where I am, I'm like, great, I'm doing this because I have to do it. That is the energy. And then there is the you really love gift giving and you really want to exude love or appreciation to somebody so you give them a gift now i do not speak this love language gifting to me is confusing and foreign to me i don't understand it it's not at all it, it's like so far removed from me i don't like gifts i don't understand them i i just don't like gifts I am very much the kind of person, if I want it, I go get it. I don't understand the exchange of an object for affection. I don't get that. That to me is like, my cat has killed a mouse and it brings me the mouse. And even that is an instinctive level of, here, I provide food for you. Which I think is what gifting really is, is it's a provider. Oh, I could totally break down the psychology of this. It's very much a, I am a provider, I have provided for you. And it's, it's a very, very primitive mindset for me. No, it's a very primitive mindset. It goes way back, which is why our animals do it. So I don't get gift giving. It's just something that it's a societal expectation and I would rather just not do it. So if, if gifting is a task or a chore for you, that task and chore energy is going to go inside the gift. So when you give it to somebody, it's going to feel different than if you are giving something out of pure love, admiration, and desire. 
two completely different things, two completely different things. And that is going to feel like something. Now, if you're not consciously aware of it and you're going through the motions, it's going to feel different. But if you become consciously aware of it, it actually magnifies the amount of energy that goes into it. So watch this. This is the difference between saying I love you to your partner where it's robotic because you're just in the habit and genuinely saying I love you. And it changes the way the words are energized. Really, that's it. That is a great example. It's the half-assed kiss, hey, sweetheart, how was your day? Because you're just repeating the habit mindlessly. That's going to have a mindless, habitual energy to it. Habitual energy has a feeling to it as opposed to consciously intended. Yeah, that's pretty much what we're talking about. Conscious intention versus habitual. And habitual energy is when you feel something, you receive something, you give something, whether it's an action or something, and it's just out of habit, versus consciously intending to do it. And depending upon which side of the spectrum you're on is going to depend on a lot. And that's really it. Habitual happens with unconsciousness and lack of awareness. So you're unaware with habitual. But when you become aware, it stops being habitual. For instance, there is a song by Lerner and Lowe called I've Grown Accustomed to Her Face. And one of the, the composer, not the lyricist, I can't remember who, which of the two of them was the composer. He was at home on his piano composing I've Grown Accustomed to Her Face. This is from My Fair Lady. Now, Rex Harrison in the musical sings this, and I love and adore and am familiar with Rex Harrison, which means there's actually no singing. <laughs> it's talking, which was Rex Harrison's style. So I can't, yeah, it's, I, she almost makes the day begin. I've grown accustomed to her face. Her sighs, her moods, her ups and downs, a second nature to me now, like breathing out and breathing in. I've grown accustomed to her size, accustomed to her smells. I've grown accustomed to her face. But let a woman in your life, that's a whole nother topic. So the composer explained that when he was trying to write the song, he couldn't grasp it. He was trying to figure out how to communicate what exactly was being done, what exactly where Higgins was in this particular point of the play, musical play. And when he was pondering this his wife came in set some tea and his lunch down on the by the table Ooh, every musician heard that <laughs> by the piano <laughs> and she left and learner low whichever one it was did a very habitual thanks dear and then he stops and he goes, I don't appreciate her anymore. Appreciation. Appreciation. Appreciation is awareness. It's the difference between habitually saying thank you, habitually saying I love you, habitually going through the emotions, habitually giving a gift. Oh, it's your birthday. Oh, it's Mother's Day. And then it's great. What am I going to get on? There's so much societal expectation. So it's habitual versus appreciative. So he had this moment where he went, I've grown accustomed to her face. I don't appreciate her anymore. And this is the whole point in My Fair Lady at the very end. He doesn't appreciate her. And now that she was gone, he suddenly was aware of how she had gone. So he has this massive <clears throat> internal strife of, oh my God, she's gone. Damn it, I've grown accustomed to her. I got used to having her around. 
and he stopped appreciating her. This was something on a very personal level that I had to learn with my partner. I grew accustomed to his face. I grew accustomed to him. And I had to learn appreciation again. Only, well, I'm just going to get downright personal and ugly with this one. I did not appreciate him. And I almost lost him as a result. And it was after he was gone, after he was out of my life for longer than I ever wanted, that I realized that I did not appreciate him. I did not. Everything was so habitual and unaware that I took him for granted. And suddenly, it changed everything. Instead of just saying, I love you, habitually, it was me consciously, every day, at least once, if not twice a day, every day, pausing the day to say, thank you for just being in my life. I appreciate you. You are wanted. Thank you. I appreciate you. And now I do that. And it's not habitual. And this is it. This is it. It's not habitual. It is literally a meditation that I have, a relationship meditation I do where I pause my day. I stop it and I consciously say, thank you. We think habitual means repetitive and that's not what habitual means. Habitual means mindless. Habitual means subconscious. It's doing something out of an act of habit, repetition, without giving it thought. It's really important that we emphasize the without thought because you can have something repetitive and you can be mindful of it. That's not an habit. That is not at all a habit. And that's the difference. Appreciation is the difference. So I went out of my way to make sure I pause, reflect. I think on what it is about him that I appreciate and that when I do talk to him and I see something about him that I appreciate oh I stop the world to tell him I appreciate this about you I love you in fact that's what love is it's appreciation love and appreciation are the same thing so when you take love and appreciation manifestors confuse appreciation with gratitude a lot you are infusing this energy into your words. So the habitual, yes, yeah, sweetheart, I love you. Mindless, they're just words. There's no energy attached to them. But when you put the intent of appreciation behind those words, I love you. I appreciate you. It changes everything. Now, it's the same thing with doing. One of the things that my partner and I, this is our little thing that we do. So it's something he started, and it's something we, we still do. I love doing dishes. Now, let me rephrase it. I love doing his dishes. It is a testament of love, in my opinion. If, if you don't, in my opinion, if you don't love doing a man's dishes, then you don't love that man. If you don't love doing a woman's dishes, you don't love her. <laughs> now, this is me personally. This is my thing. This is not a, this is the way it is for everybody. This is my little unique thing. I love you if I wash your dishes for you. Now, I love washing dishes, but it is something I will not do for anyone except the person I love. And I do mean like life partner love. And I don't know why. It's a thing I do. Now, the thing he does, and this is the most beautiful thing about him. This is easily one of the most beautiful things, is when I wash his dishes, his way of saying thank you to me is giving me a back rub and a shoulder rub while I'm washing his dishes. So this became a thing that we do. I would cook for him, and then after cooking, I would wash his dishes. And then he would come over, kiss me on the cheek, and say, te quiero mucho. And then he would start rubbing my lower back, my shoulders, the entire duration while I did his dishes. It started a thing where if he was washing dishes, 
I would then walk over to him and I would give him a back rub and a shoulder rub. And that became like a thing that we do. That this is literally very personally and privately our thing. And it was very mindful. It is always very mindful. I mindfully, consciously wash his dishes every time I'm there. It's like, it is literally my, I love you. I'm going to wash your dishes. And for him, it's, I love you and I am grateful you wash my dishes. I'm going to give you a massage. And it's just the thing we do. And then it got reversed so that now we have that association. It's with full intent, full conscious awareness, full appreciation every single time, no matter what. This is not a habitual. This is pure intent. It is absolutely a... Yeah, it's an absolute energy-infused doing for each other or to each other that we have. Same thing with giving. The few things, we don't do gifts. It's one of the things I love about them, is we both have evolved beyond the gift giving. So when we do a gift, it's very rare. It's very simple. I think I've given him one thing. He's given me like maybe two, three things total, little things. Oh my God, they were wonderful. Like I mean literally less than five bucks. I love it. And it has so much meaning to it. Like, And you could feel the emotion in, that, in it because it was consciously with intent. So whenever you do say or give something with conscious intent, infused with love and appreciation, it changes the energy every time. And it is through that emotional exchange that we connect. That's it. If it's something we say that is intellectual, that's where we talk about the same dreams. That's the sharing. If it's something we do, that's our time. That's our acts of service. And then, of course, there's the giving. I love languages. That's really what they're doing. Our love languages are literally the bids of connection that we use to connect. And the problem is, these three things require vulnerability. That is the, that's, that's what you're cashing in. You are literally exposing pure vulnerability. And when you are cashing in pure vulnerability, yeah, it's a risk. Now we're looking at the risk and aware again. Is the risk higher than? So when you seek to connect with somebody, you are literally stripping yourself emotionally naked and allowing yourself to be exposed and subjected to risk. Now, when you do that, here's the problem. If you are not using boundaries, that leaves you exposed. And a lot of people don't know how to use boundaries. A lot of people don't use boundaries. They don't trust boundaries. They think words don't matter. Words matter. Words are very powerful. And as a result, we, I need to go over the relationship we have with words. Our relationship with words is what's abysmal. And this is why we have such a problem. is because we have the wrong mindset on words. And because our mindset with words and communication is so abysmal and wrong, we have a very poor relationship with words and communication. So as a result, when I say boundaries, people are like, they don't work because they don't understand the value and the strength of words and that's really it people do not understand the strength of words so when you have all of this coming together you must have your boundaries up and around you that way you can become this vulnerable that way you can open up and it's when you open your heart and you open your mind to giving love and appreciation through acts of service acts of words 
acts of time, acts of giving. It's when you do these things that you finally allow the receiving and the rejection of those bids for connection. Now, if you are not boundaried up, a rejection is going to hurt. If you have boundaries, you won't feel the rejection at all. Rejection is 100% a lack of boundary because people do not know how to put up a boundary. Basically, it's internalizing. You've internalized the rejection. That's what it is. It's internalizing the rejection. And if you have a boundary in place, you don't internalize the rejection because you have the boundary. And that's it right there. If you have a boundary, you're not going to internalize the rejection and you're not going to get hurt. So you can allow yourself to have an open mind, open heart, so that if somebody rejects you, it's not going to be a big deal because you're not going to internalize it. It's not the rejection that hurts you. It is the internalizing that hurts. It's not what they do or say that hurts you. It's the internalizing that hurts. It's not their projection that hurts you. It's your internalization of their projection that hurts you. Get this wrapped around your head. This is it. They can beat the fuck out of you. I've had it happen. That's not what hurts you. It's the internalizing that hurts you. Understanding that internalization is the core of all pain is going to do a lot to save you a lot of trauma. Internalization is what causes pain. Not projection, nothing else. Not rejection, not your emotions, not somebody else's actions or words or emotions. All pain comes from you internalizing it. If you don't internalize it, you're fine. This is how I was able to get over a rape in 10 days. I did not internalize it. I knew that. It wasn't about me. It was about him. He's the one with the problem. That is a him problem. As a result, I didn't internalize it. Likewise, you could have somebody who just gives you a simple, yeah, I don't want to go out with you tonight. Boom, you internalize it. Now the entire world has shut down and it's four weeks of you depressed and crying and taking it personally because you've internalized a simple de decline to you going out. Has nothing to do with anything on the outside. Pain does not come from the outside. Pain comes from the inside. If you are suffering, if you are in pain, it's because you've internalized it. Not because you're accepting and resisting. That's a different kind of thing. It's because you've internalized it. Internalizing is the core. Once you understand that all pain comes from internalizing and you understand how to stop internalizing, changes everything. Pain stops. In order to stop internalizing, you need boundaries. As soon as you put boundaries in place, you stop internalizing. So you can get stimuli, you can get information, you can get abused, and you can go, oh, that's not me, that's you. You're the one with the problem because you're the one projecting. There. You completely put it out of your, your safety zone. You can shrug it off and go, yeah, okay, whatever. Now you're confident. Now you're secure. Now you're safe. Now you can be vulnerable. You can open yourself up. You can be absolutely open-minded, open-hearted, go about wherever you need, and you're perfectly fine because you are not internalizing all the bullshit that goes on outside. Learn to not internalize, and my God, your world will change. That being said, you can make bids for connection. And if people pick them up, great. And if they don't, okay, you don't internalize it. Your person, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, whatever, dumps you. You don't internalize it and you're fine. True story. The only reason why a breakup hurts is because you are taking it personally. Instead of going, Hey, to each his own. I get it. You're a different person and you've got your own desires and you need to find you. You need to get, figure out what's good for you. You breaking up with me is you about you. It has nothing to do with me. 
I didn't do anything wrong. Well, maybe you did. But it's very much a, well, th that's a whole nother nightmare. Th that is very much a person's internalizing and then they're projecting and that, that's a whole, but that's no boundaries again. We're right back to in the internalizing. But if you are stable and if you are shielded up with proper boundaries and you're not projecting and you're not internalizing, by the way, if you're using boundaries, you can't have one or the other. If you are using boundaries, you won't internalize and you won't project. So if, if you've got the boundaries up and you're not internalizing, you're also not projecting. You're living authentically. So a person can literally just make the decision, move however they want, and as long as you're not internalizing, it's perfectly fine. Internalizing is what causes the pain. So now, when you reach out to somebody, are you giving them habitual, mindless, unaware actions and words just because you're used to punching it in without any thought behind it? Which is giving them empty words, empty actions. If you habitually sit down and watch TV every single night without connecting to any of it because there's no emotionally, emotional enchargement behind it, yeah, it's not going to do anything for you. In order to connect, you must be charged with intent, with love, with appreciation. If you don't appreciate it, you're not going to connect with it. So that is pretty much what I mean by all of that. If you love shit like this, like, subscribe, follow, comment below. Let me know what part of the show resonated with you. And take a look. I'm, I'm basically expanding my city and I'm looking for building my community. If you want to join Authenticity Cities community, click on the link below, browse my directory and see what parts of it resonate with you. Thank you so much and may the kindest of words always find you.